Hi everybody, I'm Greg Fisher. Welcome to bonus weather video number three for this week. And again, the topic comes from one of my subscribers who wanted to know a little bit more about aviation weather. And I will admit to you up front, I am a total novice when it comes to this. I know just enough to be dangerous. Uh, I am familiar with terms like IFR, instrument flight rules, VFR, visual flight rules, and I believe there's a MVFR, which is marginal visual flight rules, I think and then turbulence and a couple of other things, but I am by no means an expert. So more or less what I'm doing here in this video is to share with you a website that has a plethora of information for those of you that are truly interested in this or have a great need to know this type of information, obviously, if you fly. And uh, so I just wanted to share that with you. The URL for it is aviationweather.gov, aviationweather, all one word, dot gov, G-O-V. And so let me go on ahead and put myself down here in the corner and I, I'll go up here to the top. There's a time scale here at the bottom. And this is actually 18 hours ago. And so you can actually go back 18 hours and see uh, any, or look at any one of these variables and see what it was then and how it has changed up to the current time. So I'm going to click on this little tab that says weather up here. And I'm going to put in observations. Okay, nothing happened, right? <laughs> Never a good sign. But over here, there are a bunch of layers that you can enable. So let's say I want to look at the infrared satellite imagery. Okay, there that is there. And again, I can go back 18 hours and see how this has moved along with time. Okay, now I can also disable that. I can show radar. Okay, and that will animate over the last bit of time. Uh, let's see. Now, these are the METARs. These are the actual observations. And I can zoom in uh, here to a certain degree. I know there's a, I think it's right there, right? Yes. OK. So let me move this map. I'll pan this over. And I'm going to try to get as close into RDU as I can. Let's see. There it is. Let me do one more zoom. They make it a little bit easier to read. Maybe two more zooms. OK. <laughs> so the upper left number is the temperature. The lower left number is the dew point. Uh, so 67 and 62 uh, are pretty, pretty close together. Now, again, that was at 5 o'clock in the morning, or 9z. And if I take that up, you'll be able to see that number increase through the day. I believe the highest hourly reading was 90 at 19Z. And remember, we're four hours behind Greenwich Mean Time. So this is the latest observation, 85 over 63. The visibility is 10 plus miles. Uh, that number is the pressure in millibars. Uh, I, you actually put a tenth before the, or a decimal point before that last digit. So that's 999.8, if I'm reading that correctly. That's awfully small. And then the cloud ceiling is 25,000 feet. So there are some clouds up there at 25,000 feet, which would be high, thin, cirrus clouds. Okay, So that's the way you basically look at the actual observation. So let me zoom back out here and get back out to the scale of the United States. There we go. Just pan this over here a little bit. There we go. And I'll zoom in one layer or one. There we go. OK. So let's go back up here to the layer button. And so those are the METARs. And then you have fronts. So you can actually put the current analysis uh, of all the fronts where they are. And then there's something called a SIGMET. And I had to look this up. So AIRMETs consist of turbulence, visibility, and icing-related warnings that are less severe than those in a SIGMET. A SIGMET includes thunderstorms, volcanic ash, dust storms, as well as other weather, and is more severe overall. So the AIRMETs are less severe, the SIGMETs are more severe. And so here you can enable all the SIGMETs that are currently in place, and you can actually click on these and get additional information. These are areas where there may be thunderstorms or turbulence or whatever. And then if we we can also take a look at the current warnings that are in effect. And again, you can click on those to find out what kind of warnings they are and how long they go. And then the air mets, which again are less severe, are the ones shaded here. And for any of these, you can go down here and click on a legend. 
and it will give you an idea as to what all of these uh, various colors mean, just like that, okay? And also, over here, you see the weather symbols and so forth. This will give you an idea how to decode the METARs and so forth, okay? So, that is all the different layers, and let me just take... Uh, take those off. Now there was another, uh, I think I saw another one up there. Okay, maybe not. All right, so I can go over here and there are products. And again, these are, there are things called prog charts, which are charts for the future. And uh, again, this goes from the current time and then in six hour intervals. So this will be eight o'clock this evening, two o'clock in the morning. Uh, 8 o'clock in the morning and so forth, and you can just sort of scan through those and see how the different fronts move. And let's see, you can take a look at wind and temperature data. I found this interesting. Uh, so let's say we want to look at the southeast, and we load the data, and here it has a whole bunch of stations in the southeast, including RDU, and so these are the elevations above, I believe this is above ground level, 3,000, 6,000, 9,000, all the way up to 39,000. And so at RDU, at 6,000 feet, the wind is 190 at 8 with a temperature of plus 13 C. And then by the time we get to 12,000 feet, it's southwest at 13 knots and a temperature of 2 degrees C. And then above that level, from 18,000 on up, the numbers go negative. So minus 10 C, minus 22 C, minus 38 C, and so forth, okay? Uh, and I think that's about all you can do on this particular one. Um, and there's a, a bunch of other uh, things that you can look at here. It's just, it's an amazing site in terms of, of all the different variables you can look at. Uh, on tools, uh, you can actually do a, uh, a flight path from one airport to another, and it'll give you information as you go along that path. Uh, just a myriad of different stuff. Okay, so I just wanted to make you aware of this website so that those of you that are more knowledgeable about aviation uh, can go to this site and probably get just about any type of information you could ever imagine. And uh, I will, to be honest with you, be taking a look at this more so I can educate myself uh, about more of these things so that I can relay maybe some of that information to you in the daily weather update. So uh, I'm making a humble confession of ignorance here, uh, at least to a large degree, uh, but I know that uh, this will give you, those of you interested in this, everything you need and more. And again, I will use it as a tool for myself uh, to educate myself so I can pass information along that relates to this when it is uh, interesting and applicable. All right, folks, that's it for now. That's bonus weather video number three for this week. Hope you have a wonderful Friday evening and even better weekend, and we'll talk to you again on Monday. See you later, everybody.